In 2012, Jason Aaron took over writing Thor with the launch of Thor God of Thunder with art by Asad Rubik. Over the course of eight years and four ongoing series, Aaron crafted a massive epic, starting with the saga of the God Butcher and culminating in the War of the Realms, as well as introducing four new Thors to the mythos. I want to take a look at Aaron's entire run to see how it all fits together, split into four parts. God of Thunder, Goddess of Thunder, War of the Realms, and the War of the Realms Aftermath. Today I want to look at Aaron's first series, Thor God of Thunder, to see how it all began. To catch you up to speed on the previous Thor series, all you need to know is that Asgard is destroyed and has been replaced by Asgardia, the main city of Asgard that hovers over the small town of Broxton, Oklahoma, and all Father Odin is exiled, replaced with all Mother Freya. Now for Thor God of Thunder number one. This issue is flipped between three separate time periods, 893 AD, the present day, and the far, far future, following the Thor in each one. Young Thor spends his time partying and doing raids with the Vikings until he finds the head of a dead god on the beach. Modern Thor spends his time going around and helping as he does by bringing rain to the dry planet of Indigar, where he also finds the entire Indigar pantheon slaughtered by one Gore the God Butcher. King Thor of the future spends his time wishing he were dead and fighting an endless horde of Gore's dogs who won't let him die. This issue clearly serves to set up a, a dichotomy between the three Thors while connecting them through their conflict with Gore. Issue 2 puts a spotlight on young Thor as he goes off to fight Gore while telling the tale of a god he met in his youth who was murderous, but killed with a purpose, and he sees the same thing in Gore. Despite his best efforts, young Thor is nearly killed by the god butcher, while the battle in the far future wages on and modern Thor resolves to finish Gore for good. To that end, he heads to Omnipotent City in Issue 3, which places a spotlight on modern Thor. He finds a hall of lost gods and looks for every one of them, finding them all murdered by Gore. This makes Thor start to question himself, as he wonders why he or the other gods did nothing to stop Gore before this. He then heads to the cave where it all began and meets Shadrach the Mad, a god who escaped Gore and went insane in the process. This is juxtaposed with young Thor meeting Gore in the cave for the first time, and Gore promising to torture Thor for eternity, which we know to be the case thanks to King Thor. As Gore tortures young Thor to try and get him to reveal more about the gods of Asgard, King Thor fights the endless horde of Gore's minions while also trying his best to die, although they refuse to kill him. Modern Thor takes Shadrach to Omnipotent City, which is under attack by Gore's minions, although Modern Thor learns that Gore is on Kronux and heads off to confront him. Gore uses Kronux to go back in time and steal the heart of an elder god, declaring that he wants to make a universe with no need for gods. Modern Thor shows up and he reveals that Thor revealed something to him back in the cave, which is juxtaposed against young Thor being saved by his fearless Viking allies and seemingly killing Gore. Gore then hops to the far future, followed by modern Thor, but despite teaming up with King Thor, modern Thor is 900 years after Gore, seemingly 900 years too late. Issue 6 is Gore's origin story and shows how he watched his parents and later wife and children die on a barren, dry planet, as none of the gods answered his tribe's prayers. That is, until two gods fell from the sky, one gold and one black, and Gore took the weapon from the black god and used it to kill the gods as vengeance, then set off with the le weapon, later known as All Black the Necrosword, to commit deific genocide. In the present day, he tortures the god Volstag, who cooks that Gore himself is a god, which Gore denies, before leaving to get food for his new son. Back with the Thors, modern Thor and King Thor prepare for battle, while Gore pulls young Thor from the past and forces him to work as a slave on the God Bomb, the bomb to kill all the gods across time, created by Shadrach, the god of bombs. Young Thor then meets his three granddaughters and spends no time rebelling, being, using unstable material hidden by the god slaves over the years to try and blow up the God Bomb, but fails. Instead, he's blasted into space where he's caught by the other Thors and prepares to join them in battle. Issue 9 is an epic battle the whole way through, between all three Thors and Gore. Battle with immense power across the galaxy, with enough force to put some shown in anime to shame. The battle ends with all four colliding into a, into a star, with Gore emerging victorious. Gore prepares to activate the god bomb with the heart of young Thor, and his wife calls Gore her god, causing Gore to kill her in his rage. His son sees this and finds modern Thor, and tells him that he'll pray to him to kill his father, who has become mad in his quest. Modern Thor takes the meal near to both himself and King Thor and tries to stop the explosion of the god bomb, but seemingly fails. However, he manages to succeed, drawing the black energy of the Necrosword into himself and using it to crush Gore. Gore's son comes to see his dying father and calls him the god of hypocrisy for becoming a god in his quest to kill them, after which the Necrosword energy that made Gore's son dissolve and young Thor decapitates Gore with Yarnborn, his axe. King Thor then sends the two younger Thors back home, concluding the epic arc that really works as his own story, as well as the start to Aaron's run. The art by Rubik is excellent and the dialogue is great, with a nice blend of humor and seriousness.
The narration is also told in the most epic prose, making it sound like Aaron is really writing about ancient mythology of old, with epic epithets thrown everywhere. The two big plots going forward will be young Thor's determination to lift Mjolnir, and modern Thor's feeling that Gore was right, that the universe will be better without the pettiness of gods. This arc also starts to play with themes of power and what it means to be worthy, major themes throughout Aaron's run, all the way to the end. This story is just on such an epic scale that won't be matched for a while, although it doesn't mean the next arcs are any less good. The rest of this series focuses on modern Thor, with starting with him hopping around Earth and helping some people out. He also goes on a date with environmental shield agent Ra Solomon, who is investigating the mega oil company Roxxon. Thor then sees Jane Foster, who is recovering from cancer and refuses Thor's help, wanting to fight it alone, although he does take her to the moon to vibe. Issue 13 starts the next big plot, with the evil dark elf Malekith the Accursed, the classic Thor villain, being broken out of Niflheim hell by his fellow dark elves, including one called Skumtung who doesn't talk. Volstagg of the Warriors 3 is also upgraded to a Senator of the Congress of Worlds, before going off with Thor, Lady Sif, and fellow warriors Hogan and Fandral to fight Malekith in the Dark Elf realm of Svartalheim, as Malekith wants to make the Dark Elves great again and conquer all nine realms, slaying anyone who stands in his way. They save a Dark Elf named Waziria before Malekith escapes. In response to these attacks, the Congress forms the League of Realms, led by Thor and composed of the Light Elf Honeyshot, the Mute Giant Agi, the Dwarf Screwbeard, Ud the Troll, and Waziria. They confront Malekith in the Dwarven realm of Nidavellir, where the Dark Elf Queen is hiding, but Malekith slays her, making him the official king of the Dark Elves. The League of Realms then confronts Malekith in Jotunheim, the realm of giants, where he is slaying Dark Elf refugees and succeeds in killing Agi before making an alliance with the Frost Giants. The League comes to assume that there is a traitor in their midst, so Thor kills Ud and takes Waziria to the Dark Elf ruling council when Malekith attacks, revealing Thor to have been infected with the bug that he was using to track them, making Thor the actual traitor, although not really. The bug is killed and Ud is revealed to be alive, with Thor having used some magic to fake his death. Malekith is defeated, but the Dark Elf council elects Malekith as king officially, and Waziria takes his place in Niflheim to try and create unity and peace among the Dark Elves, greatly upsetting Thor, although there is nothing he can do. The rest of the League part is allies, so Malekith plans to make his own league with the Frost Giants and the Fire Demons of Muspelheim. This arc is also great, although not as solid as the first one, but it doesn't need to be since it kicks off Eren's longest running and main plotline, that of Malekith and his plans, and finally draws the Nine Realms into play, something that will also be in focus for the rest of the run. Issue 18 is a filler issue, where young Thor fights and kills the dragon he befriended because the dragon decided to become like his father and eat humans. Issue 19 starts the next big arc, called The Last Days of Midgard. Thor teams up with Agent Solomon to try and stop the Roxxon Energy Corporation and its CEO Dario Agar from destroying the natural systems of the planet in order to profit off it, while King Thor seeks to revive the dead Earth at the end of time only to be met by Galactus, who wants to eat it. King Thor battles Galactus, and Thor and Solomon deal some blows to Roxxon, but Solomon warns Thor that Roxxon will fight back. It also turns out that Agar can transform into a Minotaur, which is fun. He's also set up rocks on plants above and around Broxton, turning it into a toxic city, before filing lawsuits against Thor for the destruction the Thunder God caused in all his attempts to destroy Roxxon's plants, preventing Thor from approaching Broxton at all. Thor approaches anyways, of course, prepared to do anything to let Agar free Broxton. Agar has other plans, releasing a bunch of trolls, led by King Ulic, to ravage Broxton. They also nearly murder Solomon, but she comes out alive, revealing that the 14 trolls she killed to protect Broxton are the first things she's ever murdered. Thor also battles Ulic and the transformed Agar, defeating them both in combat with the help of Mjolnir. Unfortunately, Broxton is left in ruins. At the end of time, King Thor's granddaughters help him fight Galactus while he harnesses the forgotten power of All Black the Necrosaur, temporarily gaining the beautiful epithets like All Black the Allfather and the God of Butchers, and uses it to defeat Galactus and save Earth. King Thor's blood restoring life to the planet, bringing the whole story full circle. Issue 24 is an epilogue to that story, showing Agar turning the world against Asgardia after blaming them for the attacks on Broxton, although the people of Broxton know different. Thor and, Roxxon, uh, Thor and Roth help clean up the town, and despite Asgardia leaving for the stars, Thor leaves his wing of the palace behind to give the people of Broxton a new home. Jane Foster also heads to Asgardia to be the representative of Midgard in the new Council of Congress of Worlds. Agar sets his sights on the Nine Realms, and King Thor brings life back uh, brings Earth back to life as Galactus is infected with All Black. The Last Days of Midgard is about trying to save a dying world from itself, the dual storyline showing the length that Thor will go to protect Earth, either from internal or external threats. It also shows that, despite being ruined in the present, Earth will flourish again in the future, and Thor will one day keep his promise to save the dying world. I usually do my analyses at the very end, but this is largely the end of Thor God of Thunder, so I'm going to reflect here.
Each of the stories serves to show off the world, with the God Butcher showing Thor's personality and history, as well as exploring what it means to be a god and, and be worthy, while the League of Realms serves to show off the Nine Realms, functioning as a lighthearted setup before the last days of Midgard hones in on Thor's love of Earth and the damage that people can do to it. If the God Butcher arc is about someone becoming a god through power, Last Days of Midgard is about someone becoming a god through money, both in an effort to selfishly destroy, contrasted against Thor, who is worthy because he ceased to selflessly help others, shown repeatedly throughout both, both storylines. The one thing they all have in common, of course, even Malekith, is their faith in their own beliefs, an unwavering determination to do what has to be done, and when Gore's faith wavers, he is destroyed. Every storyline serves to make Thor question his place in the universe and what it means to be the God of Thunder, leading up to the next event, Original Sin. Original Sin is also written by Aaron and features a bunch of secrets being brought into the world through the death of the Watcher, including the reveal of the Tenth Realm of Heaven and Thor's sister, explored further in the Thor and Loki the Tenth Realm miniseries, which I'll be touching on here. In it, Freya reveals to Thor that the Asgardians fought the Angels of Heaven long ago, and when the Queen of Angels killed Thor's sister, Odin split them off from the world tree and banished them. Thor decides to recruit Loki's help to break into Heaven, as Loki has been going through a redemption arc and fighting his evil future self. Once there, Thor and Loki are attacked by angry, violent angels who want nothing to do with the Asgardians. While Thor fights, Loki sneaks off and tries to kill the Queen of Angels, but she realizes that he is a frost giant and convinces him to talk with her. Meanwhile, Angela, the Guardians of, Gal of the Galaxy, the fiercest angel to ever live who managed to escape Heaven to Earth, is, ma is manipulated by future Loki into going back. There, she engages in combat with Thor while the Queen of Angels explains to Loki that angels feel that honor is useless and work only to win and make as much money as possible, betraying whoever they have to in the process. In the end, Angela defeats Thor, but he is taken in by the new mistress of strategies, who turns out to be Loki, who gender bent himself to better fit in. Loki then takes a bunch of death sleeves to kill Odin, but has them destroy themselves and freeze Odin and Odin's brother Cole from their prison. Thor, meanwhile, breaks himself out by summoning a storm. Thor and Angela have a rematch, but Odin arrives and reveals that Angela is actually Thor's sister, causing the Queen of Angels to exile Angela from heaven. Thor, Loki, and Odin then head off, as does Angela, separately. The story itself here is fine, and the art is fantastic, but it's not super deep. The main points here are freeing Odin and introducing Angela in heaven. Original Sin has one more surprise in store, however, as during the climax, director Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D., armed with the omniscient knowledge of the Watcher, whispers Thor a secret, making him become unworthy and drop Mjolnir on the moon. This moment is ultimately what God of Thunder has been leading up to, and although done kind of poorly in story, it works as an impactful moment in retrospect. God of Thunder has one more issue, issue 25, which is just a teaser for the next era, seeing as it is a pair of stories framed as being read by King Thor's granddaughter from his library. Both have different art styles, and both look great. The first tells the origin of Malekith, who was a war-torn orphan who learned sorcery to cause a war to end all wars, the War of the Realms. The second sees young Thor battle Frost Giants, who are trying to revive their dead King Laufey from a magic skull. Finally, we get a teaser of the next Thor, who will be female, from a book titled Unworthy. The final page is an ominous full panel shot of Thor trying to lift Mjolnir. Come back next time to find out the identity of the Goddess of Thunder as the War of the Realms breaks out, wills are tested, and we find out what it means to be a Thor. See you then.